so I think it's time. So let's get started for the last uh, presentation for today. Um, welcome everyone uh, on this uh, extending network quality of service presentation. We have Lajos Katana on stage. Uh, he's the uh, Neutron PTL this cycle, and my name is Balázs Gibizar. I am I am another core developer. Um, let's see what we will talk about today. Uh, Lajos will talk us through what is network QoS in OpenStack and why you need it. Uh, then I will give a brief uh, history of what we did since last time we were here in Berlin uh, in 2018. And then at the end, we will show us some live demo um, about the minimum packet rate feature, the last part of this, the, this set of features. So let's get started. Lesh, please. Yeah, so the first question is, uh, what is network QoS and, and why you need it? So actually, quality of service uh, is the ability to, to guarantee for you uh, network requirements like uh, jitter, uh, reliability, uh, things like that. Uh, Generally, in, in networking, uh, that, is, that is the task of, uh, of, of switching or switches or, or routers to, to make uh, this uh, uh, guarantee, make this uh, requirement work for your uh, applications. <clears throat> uh, in uh, OpenStack Neutron, there are uh, several uh, quality of service types which you can, which you can select for your uh, for your applications. So the API provides uh, uh, five QoS rule types as of now. Uh, I, I try to list them in more or less historical order. So the, the first one, that is uh, the bandwidth limit to, to uh, uh, limit the bandwidth of your, of your ports, networks, or, or floating IPs. And, uh, and your applications can, uh, can use that uh, limited bandwidth only. Uh, the second one is uh, the DSCP or a differentiated, differentiated uh, uh, service code point marking. That is to, to mark uh, uh, the traffic on your ports or networks or floating IPs and, and uh, other uh, network devices can uh, treat that traffic with higher or lower priority and, uh, and uh, forward those packets uh, based on that. Uh, minimum bandwidth is the next one. That is to, uh, to offer a, a minimum bandwidth for your ports or networks, <clears throat> which will be uh, guaranteed on your, on your, uh, on your host. Uh, the next one is, uh, is a packet rate limit. That is to, to limit the amount of packets which uh, your ports or networks uh, can, uh, can use. And, and the last one is the guaranteed minimum packet rate feature that is similar to minimum bandwidth to, to guarantee that uh, your uh, applications has always the uh, required uh, packet rate capacity on your, on your host. Uh, actually, I, I, I would like to highlight a two type from these uh, uh, quality of service rules. Uh, the first one is the guaranteed minimum uh, bandwidth. Tibi, mm. could you go back on, please? Okay. <clears throat> so uh, this was the first feature which uh, actually uh, made it possible for the users to uh, make the scheduling of your virtual machines on a host where there is uh, always enough uh, uh, bandwidth available. So why you need it? So it's, uh, it's always possible that network heavy applications, they, they uh, always need the, the amount of bandwidth during their life cycle on the host. So it's uh, not just uh, uh, for, for an or, or or whatever, they, they must be sure that they are placed on a, on a host where there is the bandwidth and they can use it uh, during their life cycle. <clears throat> uh, so we have uh, 
in, in Neutron now, with this uh, feature, we have two types of, uh, of enforcement. The first one is the, the data plane enforcement. That is, uh, uh, let's say that is the traditional networking way of, uh, of uh, making the quality of service uh, guarantee for the applications. That is uh, when, uh, in case of Neutron, Neutron will make sure that uh, your packets are uh, in a queue and, uh, and your application have the, uh, the minimum amount of bandwidth they, they need. Uh, the other type of guarantee, which, uh, uh, which actually uh, was the first with this feature, that is to, to have uh, scheduling or placement uh, enforcement. In this case, uh, NOVA will place your virtual machine to, to a host where uh, there is a guarantee that the bandwidth is, is available. So it's not just a, a networking uh, guarantee, but, but even, even the host will be guaranteed that uh, has the necessary bandwidth in, in uh, kilobit per second. Uh, and uh, why we need uh, placement? So, uh, yeah, placement in, in OpenStack is the service that uh, has all these uh, informations uh, uh, collected. For, uh, for scheduling. So it, uh, it has uh, everything now. How many vCPUs we have on the hosts, how many memory, and uh, now with this feature we have, uh, we have the bandwidth also. So you can, you can uh, make a placement know about with your configuration on your host to know uh, what is the maximum amount of uh, bandwidth in kilobit per second. Which, uh, which your virtual machines can use on that uh, specific host. Uh, next, please. Yeah. Uh, the second uh, feature, which actually uh, really similar to the previous one, that is a guaranteed minimum packet rate. Uh, that is uh, to guarantee not the bandwidth, but uh, the the minimum amount of packets, which which are uh, packet rate that is available for your for your virtual machine. On, uh, on the given host. Uh, this, uh, this feature is, uh, is really strange from Neutron perspective because there is no data plane uh, enforcement for it. So it's a, it's a scheduling uh, enforcement only which we have uh, finished for this. So your virtual machine will be placed to a host where there is enough uh, packet processing capacity, and uh, and it is guaranteed that uh, that it can use that for all the time during its uh, lifetime. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lajos. So as I mentioned, we um, I would like to give some some history of this. Um, 2018, we were also in Berlin, uh, and the time we showed the first uh, work of uh, work in progress. Uh, uh, presentation about the minimum guaranteed bandwidth. Um, and since then, each OpenStack release contains something extra on top of that. So uh, let's quickly go through that, what happened when. So Stein was the first release after the previous Berlin Summit, and there we released uh, support for basically creating and deleting VMs with guaranteed minimum bandwidth uh, QS ports. Um, then we moved forward and added support for uh, more complex lifecycle operations. We added code migration and resize support for in-train. Uh, then we added uh, live migration allocation on shelf support in Usuri. That's completed all the move operations for QS uh, features. And then we, then, then one thing left, uh, adding support for attaching and detaching interfaces from uh, running VMs with QS uh, uh, policies on those ports. But for that, first we had to step back and uh, give or implement the generic support for attaching and detaching SRIOV interfaces without QS. That was done in Victoria. So then in Wallaby, we, can, uh, we went back and added the QS support for, for the SRIOV interface attach and detach. This completed the minimum guaranteed bandwidth feature. It took couple of releases, as you see. Uh, and then in Xeno, we started looking into how to do the same thing for the minimum guaranteed packet rate. We basically uh, was able to implement everything 
in the Xena time frame, just we wasn't able to merge it in time. Uh, so in Xena, you only see the specification of the minimum guaranteed packet rate, uh, but in Yoga, you you got the the whole thing, uh, all the lifecycle operation support for the minimum packet rate as well. This also shows that when we did the minimum bandwidth guarantee, we built up a framework that now it makes it easy to add the next one, next uh, QS support uh, in OpenStack. Because as you see, like it take, take six releases to give the first one, and, and basically one and a half to, to give the second one. You can imagine that this was a, you can see that this is a multi-year effort, but you can also imagine that this was a multi-team cooperation. Um, so I would like to, uh, take the chance to say thank you for everybody who helped make this happen. Special thanks goes to uh, Bence, who helped a lot uh, in the networking area, and also Przemek, who cannot be here today, who also helped a lot in the networking area. This, all, of course, couldn't happen without the uh, Nova and the Neutron uh, core team to give us feedback and, and actually make sure that what we merge is, is working. Just to give a perspective how big this work was, uh, we merged, during the last four years, we merged 40,000 40, lines of code for this feature, uh, uh, altogether in Nova and Neutron, in more than 200 commits. Uh, if I have to guess, that means there was at least 1,000 rounds of reviews uh, on those codes. So again, thank you, everybody who helped this. This raised the question, OK, if we do all these, what's next? Ayosh, uh, please help us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, for uh, minimum packet rate, uh, there are small things still uh, are merged. Uh, so actually, those are the, the CLI support and, uh, and the hot template support. Uh, so the, the patches are there. Uh, the review is missing. So that's some organization. And, and so that's not, not actually code writing, but just to push over the gate, <laughs> these things. Uh, and there is, a, there is a bigger thing that is actually a, a quite new feature for this. That is the, the supporting uh, uh, bandwidth quality of service in multi-segment networks. So uh, for that, the first step was done in placement to, to have uh, any trade support that, uh, that's finished. And the next step is to, is to have uh, Nova and Neutron uh, specification for that, and, uh, and that, that will pave the road for the next steps, so. Okay, so if anybody wants to help, that's a good place to join to this work. Uh, contact us and, and we can help for how to look, how to continue this. Um, as we promised, there will be some live demo, so let's see if I can make this work. Uh, just a second. Okay, you see a terminal. Good. You can see uh, that's font size. Okay. I have a single node desk stack here on my laptop. Nothing special. Um, let's get into it. I pre configured this both with uh, bandwidth and packet rate. Uh, let's pray for the demo gods a bit. Come on. Why not? Yep, it's up. It was just slower because this is demo time. It's a lot slower. Come on. Okay. So as I said, this is a single node dev stack. Uh, so we have one compute node. <laughs> Um, <laughs> ah, 
I don't know what's happening. Boy, it's... Okay. So I think that will be slower than, than I expected. It worked this morning, so <laughs> sorry for that. Then I will just go through what I would show uh, as a plan B. Uh, so this, this death stack was configured with uh, both bandwidth and packet rate configuration. If you look at the OVS configuration file for Neutron, uh, OVS agent configuration for Neutron, you will see uh, bandwidth uh, configuration there and the packet rate there. Yeah, it's still dead. Um, I configured uh, basically uh, uh, five megabits per second in both direction for bandwidth and I specified like 100 uh, uh, packet uh, per second for the OVS um, and then if you have this configuration, then the Neutron uh, OVS agent will report this to the new Neutron server. That will report this forward to the placement API where basically resource providers and resource inventories will be created based on your configuration, where basically there you specify how much bandwidth your compute host has. And that is based on, in case of uh, bandwidth, it's based on uh, a bridge, in, o, in, o, in OVS bridge. Uh, in case of packet rate, it's based on the whole OVS if you are using OVS on the hypervisor. Um, if you are using OVS on a smart NIC, then you can specify a packet rate per direction of that OVS. There are separate configurations for that. So if you did this, then there will be a corresponding placement uh, resource uh, inventory there. And then you can start creating uh, the, the API pieces uh, to consume those bandwidth and packet rate resources. So one thing you need to create is a QS policy uh, in Neutron, and then you can add QS policy rules to that. Uh, you can specify how much bandwidth uh, you want per direction in that QS policy. Um, also, you can add a rule for the packet rate. As Lajos mentioned, the CLI patch hasn't merged yet, so I plan to use curl to create that uh, a rule. Uh, and there you can specify how much uh, kilo packet per second you want, and there are two ways to request either a directionless packet rate if you are using OVS on the hypervisor or direction aware OVS if you are using OVS on a smart NIC. Um, if you have this QS policy, then, then you can connect that to a Neutron port. When you create the port, you can specify the QS policy. Um, and then this will express that this port requires uh, uh, bandwidth and packet rate to be guaranteed. Um, then when you boot a VM uh, with that port, Nova will first detect that the port has a resource request. Uh, like bandwidth and packet rate, and Nova will incorporate that resource request into the placement query that Nova scheduler runs to find the place where those resources are still available. Um, of course, it also combines in other resource requests like what you specified in the flavor. So placement will then, based on the inventories that was uh, reported by Neutron server, uh, finds those compute hosts there where they are still that amount of uh, free resources available. And then the Nova filter scheduler still filtered down to that a single host selected by other means like Numa topology and, and PCI devices. And then when the, the Nova scheduler selected uh, a compute host, Nova will also start allocating those resources in placement. That will complete the, the resource view in placement. So, resource, the, so placement will know the resource inventory uh, your compute source has, and the resource usage based on what the scheduler selected, what host the scheduler selected for your VM. And then Nova continues booting that VM as, as usual. So that was what I planned. Uh, we have still a bit of time, so I will try to uh, reboot this. I'll actually see what's happened. Uh, uh, in the meantime, if you have questions, then I think we have time. Yes, please. So if I uh, recall it correctly, you have to specify in the first place which bandwidth you are giving to a specific hypervisor, and then you yeah, um, grab each time you spawn a machine there, a piece of take it away and put it in the database and write uh, until it's zero, and then it's not, not any longer um, value or usable. Uh, is there a way to on the fly, 
Okay, so the question was that, that uh, is there a way, because it's, it's visible from the talk that, that we are talking about database rows, basically numbers in database, when we say that this host knows, uh, has some amount of bandwidth and some amount of bandwidth from that is used. And the question was, uh, can we somehow correlate this with the reality on the compute host if that compute still really has that amount of bandwidth available? And uh, the answer there is, so the, the placement enforcement part of the feature doesn't handle that. It's basically, you have to, I mean, placement has to trust the operator, what the operator says. But on the other hand, for the minimum guaranteed bandwidth, there is data plane enforcement, where your VM is basically throttled when it's trying to use more than uh, what, what would make possible the other VMs to use their guarantee. So in that way, you have some of the guarantees. Still, this doesn't solve the problem when the operator defines that this compute has, has 10 gigabytes of bandwidth, but in reality, it only has five on the line. That's something that is outside of, of uh, uh, this feature that's probably need to be handled by monitoring, OpenStack monitoring or, or something like that. That, that is definitely possible. It's, it's not, not implemented in, 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 <clears throat> in Neutron Nova, but you can, you can build up a monitoring system that can, that can try look into the placement API to see what, was, what placement thinks what is available and try, that, try to correlate that with reality on the hypervisor. That's possible, but not implemented. Yeah, actually, when we started the feature for, for guaranteed minimum bandwidth, we we thought about uh, such feature to add a kind of script or, or whatever for, uh, for the operators to help them uh, automatically fill uh, these, these values in the config, but, uh, uh, but that the decision was that, uh, that, is, uh, that is, you know, that it's not possible to have a full picture of, of what you have on the host. So it's, uh, it, it will not uh, provide you a, a, a full picture for it. So it's better to, to keep the home human mind in, in this uh, and, and do it with the uh, human thinking. Yeah, so one, one thing we could, we could do there is let some code in Neutron auto-detect the, the size of the link and configure the available bandwidth based on that. That's one way to do that. Uh, we choose to not do that and let it done by some configuration management tool to configure Neutron based on that information. That simplified our, our work. Okay, let's see if I can actually do a quick demo in six minutes, because it seems now it's working. So a bit of repetition. Uh, this, is, this dev stack is configured with uh, resource provider bandwidth on the BR test OVS uh, bridge, five meg in each direction in the Neutron OVS configuration. And that BR test bridge is mapped to FISNET zero in my configuration. It's just an information that we use to create a network for this FISNET. And I also configured the resource provider packet processing without direction configuration for uh, 100 uh, packets per second uh, for, for the packet rate uh, feature. Okay, so if this is configured and an OVS agent is restarted, then the OVS agent will uh, actually report it to the, to the Neutron server, and then in the Neutron API on the Neutron agent uh, show, you will see similar configuration appearing in the, in the, in the object. These are the same configuration I did, but uh, the Neutron agent also extended that with some default values, which, which are also configurable like, like reserved uh, uh, values for each, each resources. Uh, if we have this uh, and Neutron server was able to communicate uh, with the placement API, then placement will have, let's see if I can, yeah. Placement will have resource providers. You see three big boxes, I will zoom in sh shortly. Uh, this is the placement view about the, the single compute host I have in this uh, setup. Uh, 
so the three big boxes are resource providers in a tree-like structure. The top of that is the regular uh, Nova uh, uh, root provider, with, which providing uh, memory disk and uh, vCPU resources, or reporting memory uh, uh, disk and vCPU resources. But under it, uh, uh, we introduced two child providers. Uh, directly under the root provider, we have the OVS uh, agent provider that provides packet uh, processing capacity as configured. As I said previously, if you use OVS on the hypervisor, you will have a, a single resource pool per OVS. If you use OVS on a smart link, you probably want to separate uh, packet processing capacity per, direc per direction, and you can then mm -hmm. configure that differently. And under the uh, agent provider, you have the bandwidth uh, per bridge, uh, as you saw on the configuration, uh, BR test has um, configured with bandwidth. Uh, okay, so this is the placement view without any allocations. I just configured the, the compute host with these configurations. But now I can start consuming that. First, I will create some network on that FizzNet 0 uh, and some subnet. That's just because I need ports uh, and ports need leaves in networks. And I will create a QS policy. First, that will be empty, and then I add uh, three uh, QS policy rules. Uh, bandwidth is per direction, so I will request one max per uh, each direction um, with this QS policy, and I will also request 100 max. Just a, just a note for this. So, so you can uh, uh, have a QS policy for, for networks, uh, minimum bandwidth, but... Uh, but this feature works only for ports, so you have to uh, create a port and, uh, and uh, associate the quality of service with, uh, with that port. And, uh, and you have to boot your VM with that uh, port to make, uh, make it really scheduled based on that. Yeah, the generic rule here is if you want to use any advanced networking feature with your VMs, then please pre-create the port and pass the port to Nova in the VM boot. Don't don't expect that Nova will figure out what kind of port you need uh, by just passing a network. Okay, so I created a QS policy with three rules, uh, two bandwidth and one, uh, Q, one uh, packet rate rules. So now I can sh create, yeah, that was the QS policy. I can create a port with that QS policy. Then we will quickly look into the port just to show that this is connected to the QS policy I created. And one extra details. Basically, Neutron translates the QS policy rules into placement terminology. So uh, the Neutron port has a new attribute called resource request. And that contains, that, that, that's a collection of resources the port requires. And that's already formulated in, a term, in the placement terminology. So it already talks about uh, uh, resource classes um, uh, and, and traits. Uh, that is what placement understood. And this is the, the information that Nova will read out and combine into the placement query when we boot a VM. So let's boot that VM on this port, with this port. Okay. Then, then after it's booted up, we can look at the placement again, and we will see that there are now consum resource consumption as well, not just resource inventories. Let's hope it will boot. Yep, it's booted, and now looking into placement. So the same picture as before, three big boxes, the resource providers, uh, but now there is a third, the fourth box uh, in the bottom that represents the virtual machine we just booted and it's connected to all the three uh, uh, resource providers and allocating different resources from the different resource providers uh, based on what they are providing. Uh, and if we look at, for example, the bandwidth provider, then it now has not just uh, resource uh, inventories like 5 meg total in uh, egress direction, but also there is usage uh, 1 meg, which is basically used by the VM I just booted. So this was what I would like to, what I wanted to show, and thanks to the demo guys, second time it worked. So, so thank you for the patience, and if you still have questions, we are here through, through the week, but I think we are out of time right now. Thank you.